Besides the rise of the global temper, um, average temperatures, there's also something called the tipping points in the climate system, right? And of course, the chance of crossing any of these rises along with the temperatures. Some of the tipping points are the Amazon forest die-off, the Greenland ice sheet disintegration, the permafrost thaw, and unfortunately, the list goes on and on. And I think there's about like 15 or 16 of them. The really scary part is that once breached, they are irreversible. And if I understood it correctly, they can produce a domino effect, um, triggering the rest of them. Which one of these are you currently worried about the most? Where are we closest right now? Well, there's a, there's a few tipping points which look as they'll probably tip at one and a half degrees global average temperature rise or even slightly below that. So, you know, they, they could have tipped already. We will only know after the event. And those include the collapse of the Greenland ice sheet, which would ultimately result in a seven metre sea level rise. Collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet, which is another five metres. Um, rapid thawing of, of high altitude, high latitude permafrost and a, a, a shutdown or dramatic slowdown of the Gulf Stream and associated currents. They can all occur round about now or maybe just a few points of one degree centigrade higher. So they're all big, big concerns at the moment. Okay, but collapse has that immediate ring to it, right? Like, when would we realize that this has happened? It probably wouldn't be like that movie, The Day After Tomorrow, <laughs> when a sudden ice change arrives. I think you mentioned that one in the book as well, right? Yeah, A Day After Tomorrow. It starts off very well, rooted in science, but then it goes completely off the rails after the first <laughs> half an hour of the film. No, it wouldn't be like that, but... But increasingly, it looks as if sea level is going to be rising much faster than originally thought in the IPCC reports. A number of papers now have suggested we could see two metres by the end of the century, which is only 80 years away, less than that. Um, and that fits with observations of how quickly the ice is melting and how quickly the melt is accelerating and also how quickly sea, level, sea levels are actually going up. They're now going up half a centimetre a year. Whereas about 30 years ago, it was a few millimetres. So it could be doubling every 20 years. So the collapse won't be overnight of either of these ice sheets, but it will be increasingly rapid over the next, uh, in coming decades and in the next century. Why are these projections um, worsening every year? Um, it seems that, you know, the projections were much better only a couple of years ago. And now they're suddenly like much worse, double of, of what they were for a lot of these um, parameters. Well, there's a, quite a simple reason for that. It, and that's the, the IPCC reports are conservative because they have representatives of every country on the planet looking at every sentence, objecting to certain sentences, toning down this, that and the other, United States, Saudi Arabia, Russia, whoever you like. So it's inevitably going to be conservative. And it's also a consensus based report. It tends to ignore or play down things like tipping points and their impacts because they say there wasn't enough information or there isn't enough information. So that's why. Uh, and it's been shown actually by research that climate scientists as a group tend to play down um, the worst uh, uh, factors in terms of you know, looking ahead. If they say this is going to happen uh, by a certain date, it happens soon. Or if they say this is going to happen um, uh, and it's going to be bad, it ends up being even worse. So that, you know, it, there is a lot of underplaying and has been a lot of underplaying of the threat going back many decades.